In this tutorial, we're going to look at the pipe, sweep, and revolve components in Grasshopper 3D. So let's start with the pipe component. Um, the pipe basically sweeps a circular or a circle along a shape or along a curve. So let's go ahead and draw that curve in Rhino. And then we can move some of these uh, curve points just to give it a little more three dimensionality vertically. Um, and then let's go ahead and contain that curve in this object. We can select the object, right click, set one curve and we can use that for our curve geometry. We can then do a radius, so I'll do 1 less than 30.00 for a slider. Plug that into radius and you can change it and see how it updates the um, size of that um, pipe. The next thing you could do is a boolean toggle um, and plug that into end caps here and if you toggle that to true that will close the shape. If you toggle it to off it'll leave it open and, and hollow. Okay, the next one we're going to do is sweep. There are two types of sweep. There's sweep one, oops, sweep one, and sweep two. And these basically are like pipe, but they'll allow you to define what that section is, so it's not always a circle. And the sweep one uses one rail, which we have here, and then sweep two uses two rails. The one really important thing with sweep, if I draw a curve on the XY plane here, it's going to actually sweep that horizontally along the plane so we'll have no volume. So you want to make sure it also starts the sweep always with the center or centroid of that shape and then that's where it um, moves out from. So I always draw this shape in one of the vertical views like the front view. So if I go to the front view and draw the curve and this can be any shape that you want it to be um, and then I can move that, you know, closer to the front. And then later, when you get into Grasshopper a little more, you can actually uh, sort of automatically do this by um, you finding the centroid of the curve using one of the analysis components and then locating it at the beginning of that line. But for now, this will do just fine. So we're going to do a curve and for the rail and for the section. So I'll select the rail, set one curve. I'll select the section, set one curve. And then you just plug in the rail and the section, and you can see it'll sweep uh, along that same profile, that profile along that curve. So um, that's really handy, but if you have two curves, it's also useful to draw another rail. And this can be a different shape from the first rail. Let me just add a little vertical dimension to that one. And then we'll go ahead and do a new curve, and we'll set that second rail. And now when I plug in uh, the first rail here and the second rail there, and then this is my section, um, you can see it'll sweep and it'll deform and kind of proportionally uh, change its shape based on those two rails. So it uses both of them as a guide for creating um, that volume. Again, you could always cap these if you want, um, and you can also use same height. So right now you can see it's proportionally changing the width of the um, sweep but you can maintain the height if you turn that to true. So let's just do that real quick. Boolean toggle and plug it into height. Change that to true. And you can see in this case it didn't need to change much, but um, in some instances that will actually have a big effect. So for the next component we're going to look at the revolve, revolution component. and. Um, that's right here. So again, this is located under surface freeform uh, re rail revolution or revolution. And what we need here, a good use, a good habit to get into is to actually look at the um, inputs for a component and then understand what you need. So if you hover over these, you can see I need a curve, I need an axis, and I also need a domain. And in this case, domain is going to be how much do you want to revolve it? Like 360 degrees would be a full revolution, 180 degrees would be a half revolution. So let's first start by uh, picking one of these as our profile curve. So I'll just go ahead and delete both of these. Um, and then we'll bring that curve into Grasshopper. Select the curve, set one curve. So that will be our curve. We then need an axis. So it doesn't know what to revolve around. So one um, useful technique is to actually find the endpoints of your curve and so that would be this starting point and then the endpoint and then you can draw a new line between those points 
using the line component. One thing to keep in mind, by the way, when you type in line, there's this line, which is a constructed line using points in Grasshopper, versus line um, param, which is a container for a line that you draw in Rhino. So in this case, we're constructing in Grasshopper. So I'll use um, the start point for A, the end point for B, and that will be my axis. You can see it already starts to create a geometry. So the next thing we want to do is actually figure out what is the domain. So to create a domain, we can do a number slider, and let's go through 0 less than 360, enter, and 360 refers to 360 degrees. I'll plug that in, and you see it'll actually do some crazy thing, and that's because in Grasshopper, it's always looking for radians. That's the mathematical um, way in which it describes these geometries. So we're used to working in degrees, and so you can actually change that. And by doing so, you can actually just right click and change to degrees, or you can use a degrees component. Let's plug the radian number into degrees, and then, um, oh sorry, actually I need a radians component because we're converting from radians to degrees. So you plug in the degrees, which is here, into the um, radians component and then radians into revolution surfaces. So now if I do that you can see it goes from 0 degrees and then rotates around all the way to 360 degrees. So whenever you have a radians within a component I would recommend just changing that um, to degrees um, by converting it using the radians component. It also works the opposite way so if you have a number that's looking for degrees you can use or, or radians you can convert it to degrees using the degrees component.